In this video, we focus on an alternative to running ESPR on Linux and OS X. Yes, there are folks who insist on running simulations on Windows. So to give some competition to the usual suspects on Windows, we'll look at ESPR on Windows 10. On Linux, one would normally see an ESPR session looking something like this. Once you get used to it, it's a productive environment for some serious melting of CPUs. On Intel-based Macs, the experience is mostly the same. After all, under the OS X interface is BSD, and ESPR is quite happy in this environment. Of course, OS X purists will notice that the interface is not at all Mac life, but again, one can do some serious melting of CPUs and discovering quite a bit about the virtual world of building physics that ESPR supports. Recently, there's been a new kit on the block, M1-based Macs. For decades, ESP has run on ARM processors, but the M1 takes it to a whole new territory in terms of performance. ESPR seriously blazes long on M1 Macs. On Windows, not so much. It was a niche deployment. It had some rough edges, and it was often easier to ask folk to install Windows Subsystem for Linux and then download the normal Linux distribution of BSPR. But some folks are not inclined to that path, and there are some productivity hits associated with WSL. And there is another ESPR interface. It looks a bit different, but the hierarchy of user interactions is essentially the same as in the standard interface of ESPR. It has scores of pop-up dialogues, which some folk find a bit irritating. This alternate interface is based on a graphics library which works on Linux and OS X and Windows. So I have been sending some of the rough edges of ESPR alternate interface, and what's emerged is a native graphics version of ESPR that provides most of the facilities of Linux and OS X and WSL approaches just native on Windows 10 and 11. The compiling involves some steps which might interest the hardcore geeks, but for now, let's stick with a user's view. So let's have a closer look. The SPR distribution with a number of executable files, weather files, the databases, many, many training models. And if we look in any one of the training models, we see the standard layout of separate folders for an ESP model with the configuration file. we we'll notice that these have a property in that files ending in .cfg are opened with a particular script. Let's go into a typical users folder and in there they'll have created a models folder to work with. In this particular case there's several existing models located in here plus this command script and if we look at that command script it's quite simple it's simply a batch file to start the ESPR project manager based on the file that we've clicked on. If we're opening up an existing model, we would simply go into the configuration file and click on that, which will then start up ESPR focused on that model. And then we could go and, for example, ask for a simulation. Yes, we should get something like that when we're done. If I ask for an integrated simulation. I can look at the results analysis. And inside that model, there's a temp folder with results in there. So I open that up and then of course I can go in and say plot the results and temperatures. 
in the various zones. And it will grab that information and draw that out. So these are facilities that a normal user of ESPR would expect to find. I go and click on this command. Again, I will get the project manager open, not focused on any particular model. I could create a new model. I could open an existing model, um, for example, an exemplar. And the usual uh, ones come up. Here's a medical center. Let's proceed, and we'll, in the models folder, we'll create a thing called surgery, and we'll copy the files into there. And again, we have one of our little training models, and I can go and work on it as required.